You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Weather with Enthusiasm is this podcast. Friday afternoon, July 7th, 2023. An extreme heat warning is in effect for portions of the Arctic today. This was issued by the Environmental Canada temperature currently in a city called Little Chicago, just south of the Arctic Circle, 91 degrees. It's clear from the European computer model the temperatures are hotter as you go north into the Arctic. I just can't find an official reporting station north of Little Chicago. It has nothing to do with Chicago. We have several phenomenal heat waves going on in the world right now. To me, the most impressive and intense one is over Russia, an asterisk hand Russia. Temperatures close to there hit 105 today. Forecast high tomorrow, 105. This is in Russia, 46 degrees north latitude, and the hundreds extend north to 53 to 55 degrees north latitude. 90s extend north well into the Arctic Circle. That's forecasted for this week, and again, we even have 90s occurring as we speak. Probably 3 or 4 o'clock Friday afternoon their time, 6 o'clock Central Daylight Time here in Chicago. But we, again, this is Chicago, United States, but we are talking about right now Little Chicago, which is a town very close to the Arctic up in northwest Canada. Phenomenal heat that's going on. We also have, this is something that many people could expect by now, on the the ring of fire on the outer edge of this dome of heat here in the Missouri area, Illinois area, Maryland, that goes across the country pretty much. Just continuous, extreme heavy downpours for the next several days. Chicago included for tonight and tomorrow. You never know when the storms could develop. There is no computer model that could forecast storms with accuracy. But the potential for storms heavy rain downpours exists for tonight and tomorrow before those chances move south of Chicago, but it remains over the St. Louis area. Temperatures are much cooler in St. Louis than normal with highs in the low 80s for tomorrow. The intense regular heat and humidity moves into St. Louis by Tuesday. Temperatures going well into the 100 teens every single day in Phoenix, Arizona. They're about to break a record for the most consecutive days of 110 degrees or higher. It's going to be about 18 days by July 16th. There's a 10% chance the temperature might hit 120 degrees, says the National Weather Service, this week in Phoenix. In reality, the chances are actually higher. Temperature hit 135 degrees in Schuster, Iran today. It's not an official thermometer, therefore the temperature could be 1 or 2 degrees off. It might have been 137 But for the records, it's going to get changed by tomorrow to 120 degrees. That's because the closest official thermometer is 50 to 100 miles away. And that place is where there's a city and an airport. That place was 120 degrees. So if you want to see the 135, quickly get to AccuWeather right away. Look up the city Schuster, Iran, because if you get to it tomorrow, it's already going to be changed according to the official mercury thermometer, whatever thermometer they have over there, which is perfectly accurate. The problem is it's 50 to 100 miles away. So in reality, the real temperature is this unofficial thermometer, which is located in the city itself, in the hottest desert of the world, where there are no official thermometers. So the temperature might be one or two degrees off. And that's why the 134-degree reading in Death Valley, California, the official hottest 
is very unlikely to be the hottest because of all of these unofficial thermometers which are registering higher than 134 every summer we go through this every summer it's called the loot desert desert it is so hot there on the surface the rubber of shoes melts when you walk onto the surface uh, it's just it, it's a volcanic rock it feels it looks like the pictures look like you're on a different planet when you get there so phenomenal heat going on over there, almost as usual. I've noticed that temperatures tend to fluctuate between the 110s and the 130s over there. We're talking about well into the 130s, mid 130s. This occurs every summer, and it's not reported because the thermometers are not official. But again, they're not official. That means that the thermometer says what it says in your living room or your car. The, the thermometers are accurate. They're just not accurate to the tenth of a degree, so they don't go into the record books. But it's if you bring a thermometer there, there's no one there. The most destructive places of our planet do not have official readings. We have very little official readings, such as Antarctica and the Loot Desert, because people are just not willing to go there or set up a thermometer there. Uh, anyways, that's the story with the phenomenal heat. The heat dome in Arizona intensifies and expands this week, which is why we're going to see an increase in temperatures. In fact, we're even going to see a south flow develop later on this week, bringing moisture into the region. But subsidence will allow temperatures to continue to be just as hot. There will not be any instability for the most part, which will allow the sun to continue to heat things up full max. In fact, overnight lows will stay in the 90s for Phoenix, Arizona as we go through the week. So we have cooler than normal temperatures as you head east, but we have extremely hot temperatures out in the west and up north, including the Arctic, including Russia. And Iran is just a story in and of itself, just such intense heat. And I've noticed there's heat warnings in effect, even for portions of the northeast as well. Severe weather risks, of course, are high anywhere along that front from Oklahoma going east, maybe even Colorado going eastward all the way to the mid-Atlantic area. And whenever you have that, it's the plains which are going to get hit the hardest due to the dry line. And we have a major heat wave going on from the desert southwest all the way to Florida. Excessive heat warnings in effect for Florida as well, and heat advisory criteria will likely develop for Texas again within a couple days. So lots of heat and lots of rain along that front, unpredictable rain because it's connected to thunderstorms. The flooding rains in the Chicago area for tonight and tomorrow on and off, if they do develop, and then that moves south of here, the two inches of rain, maybe more, move south of here as the heat moves south as well as we go into next week. Quite a week this week across the world. I wish everybody a wonderful week. Stay safe and have a wonderful Shabbos and a wonderful weekend. You've been listening to the podcast Weather with Enthusiasm. Special guest on our show. Uh, what is your name? Swizzle. Temperatures going into the low hundreds for the next three days. Holy cow! The Blackberry winter that comes up every year here in the Midwest on May 11th. Several additional feet of snow is expected by Monday morning. <gasps> This was in the forecast from a week ago, and the National Weather Service is finally acknowledging it today. Conditions are favorable for the development of an El Nino. We're going from one extreme to the next extreme. Despite the fact that it's 113 during the day and 46 at night, you could still do a little dance. <laughs> Recorded temperatures during heat bursts have reached well above 104 degrees. Oh my gosh. Google weather with enthusiasm and they're all going to come up. Meteorologist Simcolette. Weather with enthusiasm is his podcast.